Good afternoon. My name is Paul Kramer. I'm a professor of chemistry here at Penn State. And today what I'm going to show you is a little bit about the work that we do in our lab, which involves salts, organic molecules, or polymers, and water. And when you mix these three components in solution, we're very interested in their phase behavior. We're physical chemists, and we might have a beaker, and that beaker might contain a polymer molecule that I'm just going to draw as a long string. I'll show you the structure of that molecule in a second, and we'll talk a little bit about how its phase behavior changes as I put different salts in solution. But this is just a beaker filled up with a certain level of water. So this is water in here. These are polymer molecules in here. The molecule that we're dealing with is called polyanisopropyl acrylamide. We'll talk a little bit about its structure and what it can do in those solutions. But in the state that I'm showing you here, the solution is clear. It looks just like a glass of water. Light molecules just go through it. If I heat up this solution, so delta temperature, these polymer molecules are going to collapse. They're well hydrated in this state, and all the little monomers here along this big, long polymer chain have specific hydrogen bonds to them. The water molecules surround them very, very well. When I heat this up, the water molecules desorb from the surface. This molecule collapses in solution. It actually aggregates with other molecules that are also present within that solution. And this longer, well-hydrated string suddenly collapses up into a ball with other little polymer chains right next to it to form larger aggregates. Those aggregates scatter light. And in fact, instead of being clear like the solution that's here, this solution basically looks like the color of milk. In fact, it looks like the color of milk for the same reason that milk looks like the color of milk. Namely, it scatters a lot of light molecules. So you go from something that was originally clear to something that was cloudy. Interestingly, when you don't just have water in the polymer, but you add salt to the solution, the behavior becomes quite interesting. It obeys something called a Hofmeister series that was first thought about by Franz Hofmeister in the late 1880s. And here I'm giving you a series of anions. So I have carbonate and sulfate over here on one end of the series. These are well hydrated. These are two minus ions. They can hydrogen bond with the waters around them. And so they jealously guard their hydration shells. That's waters that are directly bound to these ions, these anions, in aqueous solution. On the other hand, if we look over on the other side of the series, what we have over here are thiocyanate, perchloride. These have charges of each minus one on them. They don't guard their water molecules so well, and they're much less hydrated. Let's say I start with sulfate. If I start adding sulfate to solution, it won't come anywhere close to this polymer surface. In fact, there'll be a region around this polymer, if I just draw with a little dashed line, in which the sulfate, that's this ion right here, can't come. So the sulfate molecules can be out here, but they'll never come close to that polymer chain. That's simply because they don't want to lose those hydration waters. It's costly to the system to actually have to expel them from the surface. And because it's costly to the system, that what you do is you minimize that surface area of the polymer by having it collapse into this aggregated state. So this whole phase transition in the presence of something like sodium sulfate which is one of the salts that you'll be dealing with in your unit today, if I use this salt, then it becomes much more difficult to undergo this collapse process. And what you then see, sorry, it becomes much easier to undergo this collapse process. And as a consequence, the actual phase transition from this state to this state happens at lower temperature. On the other hand, if I pick something like thiocyanate on the other end of this series, well, those molecules, sodium thiocyanate, became, behave very, very differently in solution. Again, this is a much less hydrated anion. Thiocyanate will come right up and bind to the polymer chain. And if I show it, you this in the context of the structure, which is over here, 
we know from years of study what the binding sites are for many of these anions. So thiocyanate will bind right next to this nitrogen here at this carbon in one place, will also bind over here. Now it makes it, instead of making it easier to collapse or forcing this collapse, what sulfate does, thiocyanate makes it more difficult to collapse. So it stays in this uncollapsed state and won't collapse. So now this phase transition temperature goes to higher temperature instead. And so you'll have to raise the solution temperature to ever higher temperatures to get it to collapse. In the lab you have today, you'll be dealing with just one more ion, and that's chloride, which is behavior somewhere in the middle between these two. And so the lab you're running, you should be able to see that sulfate makes this collapse temperature go more easily, happen at lower temperature, thiocyanate will happen at higher temperature. So you'll be learning a little bit about the type of chemistry we perform in our laboratory, and I really hope that you enjoy your lab.